Becoming Fishers of Men. Uh, Mark Kewen from Laidlaw College joins us now. Mark, kia ora. Kia ora, how are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing very well. I mean, um, not knocking the fisherman thing. Jesus was a big fan of fishermen. It was his, his first four disciples. He says, I don't mind hanging around with these smelly blokes and, uh, and invited them to, to follow him. Well, that's right. And I've been thinking quite a bit about this. Um, in my role at Laidlaw, I've got this fancy title called the Director of Evangelistic Leadership. So I spend all my time thinking about evangelism. And I was reading the calls in Mark chapter 1, Matthew 4 and Luke 5, and how exactly what you said, Andrew, Jesus calls Peter and then James, John, and Andrew to come follow me and I'll make you fishers of people. Mm -hmm. And of course, in Luke's gospel, he changes the Greek word to to catch them alive, which is different to what we do when we fish because normally we will uh, catch a fish, gut it, scale it, and eat it. Um, but, um, so yeah, I've been thinking about that and I was thinking the very question that you raised before the break where you said, you know, how does this apply to all of us? Yeah. And I've, our natural instinct is to jump to the fact that we've all got to go around and tell everyone about Jesus, which of course is true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, 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 when we get up in the morning, we head out to work, we're going fishing. Yep. And, uh, but I think I, then I got to think about the ancient and indeed the modern fishing industry. And I, I wonder whether what's really going on there is that uh, because we all have different gifts, we all have different skills, we're not all great speakers. Some are introverts, uh, some are fantastic at making scones, uh, some are really good at uh, making clothes, uh, some are just good at cleaning up the place or ushering people in. Yeah. And uh, others have equally different jobs, you know. And I was thinking of the church as a fishing village. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking of the fact that I have to go out and tell everyone about Jesus and fish, and because some of us aren't very good at that, we find that very difficult. Maybe it's better to think of our church as as like a village, like Capernaum back in the first century, Mm -hmm. where the whole village was a a fishing village. If you've ever been there, it sits right beside the Sea of Galilee. And Peter's house, which we're pretty sure because they found an old church under and un- under this particular spot is where they've built a big church, and it's right overlooking the sea. And the whole uh, infrastructure of the town would have been built around that. So the financial side of it, the tax collecting side of it, um, preparing the f- preparing the boats, building boats, nets, hooks, lines, and they had a whole variety of those sorts of things that they used. And then the whole families would have been involved in uh, organising, feeding the fishermen. Uh, preparing the fish once the fish had come in, uh, getting the right bait. Some people would have to be experts on weather. Yeah. Uh, and then there's those managing the finances. And I was thinking, is it a good idea to think of our church as kind of a fishing village or a fishing industry? Yeah. No, I, I love that metaphor because, honestly, if you just have a, um, a bunch of blokes catching fish, I mean, I've seen that in action, actually. Yeah. Uh, bunch of guys they hire a launch they all go out they drink far too much beer uh and and honestly there's not a lot of productivity that's that's more recreational than something which is uh vocational or even sustainable that's right so i like i'd like you know so paul introduces this wonderful idea of spiritual gifts and tells us that we're all different and we've all got different roles to play and, and I imagine that a really good fishing a fishing business would have really good management and leadership, would have people organizing things very carefully, they'd have the right gear, uh, they'd be managing the finances, they'd be going out and uh, trying to maximize the catch, they'd be bringing it in, they'd be organizing the catch, uh, there'd be a fishing market where people sell it, yep. and the fishmonger's wife and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> and people will come in, and then there would also be connections to the wider world because you've got to sell the fish. Yeah. And Galilee was, the Sea of Galilee fed the whole nation in this regard. Where, yeah. And the Romans would have been involved in this as well. And it's interesting that John, there's a, there's a discussion about John. How on earth does he know the high priest? Yeah, Because it's mentioned in John's gospel. Now, that makes sense when you think of someone who's running a big fishing business. And when, when you read Luke and you read that actually, um, actually, and Mark, James yeah. and John leave their father in the boat with the hired hands. Mm-hmm. So you've got this whole idea, and I was thinking it's good for us all as listeners to go away and think, Lord, I'm part of a fishing industry, a fishing business. Yeah. What is my role to play? Yeah. And how can I serve in an enhancing this mission of catching fish? I love this because it's, sometimes we can beat ourselves up over this one, 
and and go, oh, yeah, great commission. Well, I'm a total failure. Jesus said, hey, here's this one thing that you guys should be doing. How many people have I led to Christ in the in the last X period of time? Gosh, I'm useless, and, and use this to beat ourselves up. But actually, if we ask a different question and say, how am I contributing to the preaching of the gospel in my community, through my church, through other missions, organizations, perhaps? Mm. How am I part of the village, which is uh, proclaiming Jesus, which is lifting him up in the world? That's a different proposition, one we can all be a part of. And I think that's what uh, gripped my soul when I thought of this the other day. I thought, gee, this is a really interesting idea because the people who share the gospel, who are the, the Peters, James, Johns, and Andrews, the, the fishermen or fisher people or fishers, yeah. that they they're the front line of a huge group of people. I mean, there's other images you can use an army. Yeah. And it takes an enormous infrastructure to run an army. And I think the question for us to go away from this conversation is to say to to, to ask God, God, how do you want me to contribute? You know? So someone like an accountant suddenly becomes really important uh in the work of God. Someone who's a musician becomes important. Someone someone who's just cooking and feeding becomes important. So I think then we, we realize too that um, we're all part of this yeah. and we want to make our church a great fishing uh, industry or village. I think I think that's our goal and, and should we, we should get excited. Mm. And the seemingly mundane is not mundane. Yeah. It's important. It's, it's super good. I think the other side of this, which is an important question to ask, is – Within our church community, within our, the spiritual community of which we're a part of, are we still catching fish? <laughs> Am I part of a fishing village anymore, or is it more of an exclusive club, uh, and, and we're not so interested in fishing anymore? We may have a fish sticker on our car. We may have some, some fish metaphor uh, in our stained glass windows, perhaps, but are we actually catching fish? Is it still... I suppose, an outwardly focused organization for the benefit of its non-members rather than being, uh, well, just a a bunch of guys throwing, uh, drinking beer and throwing bait into the water. I mean, honestly, are we catching any fish? When was the last time that we had a baptism at our church? When was the last time we invested in an evangelism outreach? Um, Some tough questions to face there. Yeah, I think we need to ask ourselves that question and we need to be brutally honest with ourselves and also knowing that there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus oh, yeah. because every church in this nation is failing. Yeah. And then say, Lord, we want to be a place that catches fish. And of course, Jesus says in uh, Luke 10 and in Matthew 9, he says, look at the fields, they're ripe for the harvest. Ask the Lord to send workers out into the harvest field. We could put that another way. Lord, send fishermen yeah. and fishermen out into the world to catch fish. And uh, at the end of time, there's the, the parable of the dragnet. Yeah. So I think that we, our first step is to be prayerfully considering that question and then making sure, too, that we not only do all that we can do for the mission, but we're also trying to become a good amateur fisherman, Yeah. all of us. We're trying to become people who do share the gospel with our friends and family and bring them along to hear the gospel from those who are really good at fishing. Yeah. So they can come to Jesus. Really important stuff. And to, I, I suppose, to fill out the metaphor there, uh, let's make how many fish are we catching at the moment a key measure of whether or not we are faithful to the commission that Jesus gave us. It, I love this metaphor, Mark. I think it's a, a fascinating conversation. It, it doesn't let us off the hook, uh, as it were, no. but, but we do need to bait that hook effectively if we're going to be drawing people to Jesus. Thanks so much for the work that you do at Laidlaw. Thanks for joining us today. Keep fishing. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.